We're live. All right. Well, welcome to CNN. I'm your host, uh, Taylor, and we have a very special guest today. His name is Josue Stalin. Josue, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. So you have an interesting question for us that uh, we wanted to raise today here on CNN, and that is, should America try communism? Communism, great. It helped Russia all throughout the world. It is good for everybody. Everybody make money. It's a great system. Well, that's a pretty convincing argument if you ask me. It sounds, you know, we just need more progress in this country, and we've just been hung up on all these things like individual liberty and Judeo-Christian values and all this freedom nonsense. Uh, it's just way too much for, for us here at CNN. We're ready for something new. Real communism never been tried. This is the first time it's going to be huge success. We try out communism. Everybody have food and gas. Yeah, you guys worked out all the kinks over there in the USSR, right? It was perfect. Nobody died. It's capitalist pig propaganda, what they teach you in your public schools and such. My thoughts exactly. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, there's our intro. Hello. <laughs> Wait. Good. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Taylor and I had a long day today. We are doing that because CNN just put out an article about uh, should the government control food and gas. But Taylor and I had a long morning with Scott where we went and did some filming here in Los Angeles. By the way, welcome to Will and Amla Live. Uh, no Amla today, just Taylor and myself doing the show today. But we had an interesting day where we went and actually... If you guys have been on Twitter in the last, I don't know, three or four days, you've seen these videos and pictures of Los Angeles at the train tracks, and you have seen that at those train tracks, there are packages strewn all over the place. So I, I have a couple videos uh, I want to show you guys. Here's one here. This is from when we were there. Just filmed this live down in Lincoln Heights. This is downtown Los Angeles. Uh, Taylor, I'm going to pull up uh, one more. Okay. Give me a second. Describe for those listening as well. For all of you guys listening who aren't actually watching, you are seeing a train and you are seeing packages destroyed all over the place. Okay? So what has happened in Los Angeles? Well, they have made it so that there is now zero bail, so that anyone who goes and does all these types of things, for the most part, is just let out with no actual consequences for what they did. And so if you go there at around 3 p.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., you're going to see just mobs and groups of people who are going and taking over these trains in Los Angeles. There are tr Union Pacific and other trains are saying, we don't want to put our trains through Los Angeles anymore because of all the crime and all of the horrible things that they have seen and the people getting all of their objects taken away, right? And this is $5 million that Union Pacific has lost from these train robberies. Train robberies are up 356%. Uh, 90 shipping containers are taken down or messed with every single day. 90. 90 shipping containers. Get that number in your head, right? This is a huge amount of containers. There's a huge amount of people actually going in and doing it. And so this isn't actually controlled by the LAPD. This is controlled by the Union Pacific Police Department that works on these train tracks, okay? So it's not directly tied to LAPD. But now you have Union Pacific, Pacific who is going in and begging the DA and the people at the police and saying, please, you cannot have this zero bail policy. Excuse me. When you have this zero bail policy, look what happens. You t put these people in jail. They get out the next day. And then right after, because there are no consequences for their actions, they just go right back out to the train and start stealing again. What is the, the, the reason why people would not just go and commit crimes again? If someone could murder people and rape people and steal and do all these horrible things and they knew that they could get away with it every single time, why would they not commit, keep committing sinful, terrible things? There's obviously no reason, right? We, we, there is no no moral principle. Dennis Prager talks about all the time how people are not naturally born good. Many of these values, including freedom and liberty, these things have to be taught to people. And so if you have no consequences for people committing the wrong actions, then you are going to continue to have people do these things and be selfish and take advantage of situations because there is no one holding, holding them accountable for the things that they do. And think about how sad this is. I mean, you're going there. Uh, let me see if I have some pictures. Here, here's a picture. 
of of us on there. You can see there's hot scar. You can see the back of his head. Even the back of his head is. Who is took good that looking. picture? That's a great picture. Oh, it is a good picture. Uh, Taylor, thank you for taking that picture. We also there were some Fox Business people over there. Uh, a yeah. nice lady named Kelly who was reporting on it, and and some other people. They were great. And th but this is what you see, and this is for yards and yards. Like this wasn't just confined to one little area. Taylor can confirm. I mean, we we were there, and we were walking around. Um, let me. I have I have one more picture. I want to show you guys. Let me. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Wait, I want. Where, where, I have one with my my arms crossed, where I look really here. Look there at this one. Oh, also, wow. you took this photo from the top down, so it makes me look really short. <laughs> it makes me look like it's a hobbit. It's definitely my photography. I, it, it, is, <laughs> it is your photography. Look how much smaller my legs look my, than my arms. My I'm, arms are not the same size. I'm as hiding my legs. your double chins. That's uh, that's you know Gen Z photography 101. You got to like Instagram photography. You go high to low. Uh -huh. No, that was helpful. I mean, I'm covering my beer belly with my crossed arms. I wasn't so. close enough. Is the problem? No, you. We should close punch enough. in though. Right, right, no. But so that that's what it looks like, okay? We are standing on this cardboard. I mean, it's cardboard for, a, what, a quarter mile, half a mile, just lying down on both sides of these train tracks. There are people's Amazon packages. There are REI packages, UPS packages. I mean, just everyone's personal belongings. I mean, think about if for the holidays, you sent something to someone, a family heirloom or something that was incredibly important to you or, or, or a very special gift that you hand worked on to send to someone and some hooligan in the middle of the night because they can and because they can get away with it comes and just destroys the package. And most of this, like they don't care about the environment. They're just coming and littering this all over the place and destroying the, this once nice, beautiful place in Los Angeles. You know, not, I mean, Los Angeles hasn't always you know, hasn't always been this terrible. It's always not been the greatest place, but it always it hasn't been this terrible since like the 90s. And now that that crime that we had in the 90s that was getting abated for all these years is now coming back in full swing and even worse to a greater degree at an even faster pace because the leftist moral virtue signaling principles that they are governing this city on and the rest of these other leftist cities across the country. I don't want to just say Los Angeles, New York City, Chicago, Austin, Texas, uh, all across the country. They are finding that the principles that they put into practice don't actually work. But here's the thing. None of these people actually knew, thought that they were going to work. I don't think, I, I'm, maybe I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, but I don't think that there was any leftist person in office who went there and said, oh yeah, defunding the police, not having police, or zero bail policy is actually going to help people. Because they specifically campaigned on we are going to help disenfranchised communities, we are going to help minority communities, and we are going to make it so that these people can get back on their feet and really start helping out, uh, and really start changing America as we see it, right? For specifically these underprivileged minority communities. And what has this done? This has done the exact opposite. The COVID stimulus packages did the exact opposite. I mean, it sent black unemployment up to like 16% back in its peak in 2020. There was a, a latest jobs report where it started black unemployment was at 6.5% and it's shot up to 7.1%. As these, pro these progressive policies get worse and worse, the, the outlook for these minorities all across America continues to get worse and worse. None of these things help. I, I would be urged to have someone tell me, like, please, if there's anyone in the comments, I know we have leftists and, and people who don't agree with this show who watch. I mean, just tell me in the comments. Find me a place where defunding the police or zero bail policy has deterred crime. I can't think of any examples, and I, I've looked this up. I mean, I do this for a job. I can't think of any place where this has actually worked. All it has done is make Make places worse. Make it so that people are leaving places like Los Angeles and New York and Illinois in droves by the thousands. People are leaving these states by the thousands. Why do you think that is? Because of stuff like this. Because I am standing in this picture on a mountain of cardboard and Amazon packages that people ripped up and destroyed of someone else's property that they have to take no accountability for for their actions. And this it, it isn't just, you know, people going in and stealing Amazon packages. It is a violent assault is up, murder is up, uh, stealing is up, all sorts of crime in Los Angeles is up, especially, you know, robbery like in stores, uh, as you've seen all across the state, not just in Los Angeles, but all across the state with, you know, like Nordstrom and other small businesses, gas stations, stuff like that where you can steal $950 and get away with it. It, it, it has gotten truly ridiculous and out of hand. It's gotten to a point where these people can't stop, you know, there was a time in America where leftists could kind of put in weak social justice policies and you wouldn't really see any difference 
in the communities, right? Like they'd say, oh, this is going to help black people and it lines their own pockets. And But it doesn't marginally actually hurt those communities. But these types of policies where the left has gotten so radical and said crime is allowed, lawlessness is allowed, law and order is a thing of the past, it's a relic, it's racist, it's horrible. These types of policies are now really starting to bite not just them in the butt, but the communities that they claim to represent. It's hurting everyone. Everyone is being hurt by this. No one is benefiting except for these politicians who get to say, yes, I am virtue signaling. But they don't live in these communities. They don't live in these neighborhoods where this is happening. They don't live in the neighborhoods where stores are getting shot up and, and robbed and the, the police are defunded and gangs are coming back and feeling safer about doing so in these communities. They don't live there. They have their nice little mansions in the, in the Hollywood Hills or in Beverly Hills, and they don't ever have to go to these communities, right? Or G Gavin Newsom gets his own mansion built outside of Sacramento because his wife didn't like the one that they had, the, the governor's mansion that they had. This is the level of, of, of policing and of care that these people have. They don't care about you. They don't care about you whatsoever. If they cared about you, they would be tough on crime. They would know that that deters crime. They would put more police in communities, like in Chicago, which has been shown that if you put more police in, in Chicago, crime will go down. It's the same in Los Angeles, the same in the, the gang-ridden neighborhoods in Commerce City and Compton and Watts and South Central. It's the exact same thing. Time and time again, they've shown with cops being put in there that crime actually goes down. It's common sense. This isn't rocket science for people. This shouldn't be rocket science. This is how bad they've manipulated you and misinformed people to believe this nonsense that this is going to help. All it does is hurt people. All it has done is hurt people. And Taylor, you, you were there. What did you think of the situation when, when you were seeing everything that happened? I mean, just the visceral reaction of seeing all that trash on the ground and just, you know, if you've ever been burglarized or had something stolen or a car broken into or anything like that, it's just this feeling of like being violated. But to see that happening to like an entire city, it's just, it just speaks to like, you're talking about the, the lawlessness and just the, the, it was like, the worst of humanity on display that people are just completely having no inhibition coming through ransacking this and and really i mean it's it's like on the one hand it's you despair of the lawlessness but on the other hand this is just the beginning it's it's one thing to to break open in a train car and steal a bunch of amazon packages it's another thing to see the see the more severe degrees of crime that happen because of the same policies and like we're talking about like we we talked about that story before the show of the the girl who was in LA who was working in a furniture store UCLA student and just murdered um in her in at her workplace uh because I presumably this was a criminal on the street and he was I'm sure it wasn't his first infraction and they're just released right back out on zero bail and all this stuff and and, and it just keeps on happening there's a, a woman who uh, I forget who she was like uh, but was in her home in Beverly Hills and it was broken into she was murdered in her home um, this is this is not just contained to like some Amazon packages the whole approach to uh, maintaining law and order is fundamentally misguided and broken and the people who are enabling it don't care enough to change. They're more interested in virtue signaling um, than they are in keeping a city safe and functional. And that that's reprehensible. Yeah. Yeah. We have this article pulled up here from the Daily Mail, whereas the father of that UCLA student who was who was murdered by a homeless guy in the furniture store. And the guy, the dad said, we have a lot of criminals on the streets that shouldn't excuse me, that shouldn't be out. Um, he blames the woke politicians and prosecutors after she was randomly stabbed to death by homeless man in furniture store. This is what happens when you let George Soros pick your DAs. Okay, this is exactly what happens. These people don't care about any of this stuff going on whatsoever. This is a bigger problem than just, you know, the crime and everything. I mean, it goes into voting and all sorts of leftist policies that they are trying to enact. OK, you have to be incredibly cognizant of the people who are getting into these offices, the people who no one knows their names. Right. I don't know all these people's names. I mean, you go around. If I were to do a man on the street video like I, I've done in the past and I were to go around and ask people in L.A. and say, you know, who are you, who's your district attorney? Uh, you know, who's the attorney general? All these kinds of things. No one would know. No one would know. And what I think we should do is that we should make these people famous. We should make them famous for what they have done blast their faces, blast their names all over the place and let people know that these are the people who have wrought this horrible, terrible destruction on this city. And it should be done in all of these left wing cities that, that we're seeing crime on the rise. It should be done everywhere. All right, let's go to the CNN article. This is pretty funny. I, don't, I think CNN, I have to be honest with you. I think CNN did this title as a clickbait. I think that they knew 
that conservatives were going to see this title and like screenshot it oh, and sure. share it everywhere. I think CNN knew what they were doing with this. CNN put out a piece today that says, should the government control the price of food and gas? Taylor, what's the first word that comes to your mind when you think of that? Um, utopia. Utopia. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> Love. Mass happiness and joy. Uh-huh. Mass controlled happiness. Yes. Yeah. To, to each according to his ability and from each according to his mm -hmm. name or reverse that, whatever. Right. It's communism. Okay? <laughs> it's communism. This is Marxism. Asking if the government should control the price of food and gas. What? Wh why would the government ever need to control the price of food and gas? It, the, the, this is why I said that I think that it was clickbait. Because you go deeper into the article and it talks about some, some economists and people, and most people who they interviewed economists say, no, that's a bad idea. So they put that in there. They didn't just come on and find economists who were like, yes, we need communism in America. Like they came and like actually showed that there are economists who disagree. But what, it, what, is, what would happen if the government controlled the price of food and gas? Well, it's been done in, in countries before. This wouldn't be the first time ever. When you have too much of something, then you have demand go down. When you don't have enough of something, then the demand goes up. OK, so imagine if you set the price on something, a business sells a sandwich for five dollars. OK, and then the government comes in and says, no, you can't sell it for five dollars. That's too high. You have to sell it for for three dollars. And they set the price because it's getting too high because inflation is getting too bad. Well, now this sandwich company, they're not going to make as many sandwiches. Right. Because now they can only make they can only make three dollars off of every sandwich where they used to be able to set it and make five. Now they can only make three dollars off of every sandwich. This is basic capitalism for you. Right. And so because now the sandwich is set to three dollars and they're not making as many sandwiches, that means that not as many people are going to be able to come in and get sandwiches. So now people are hungry. Right. So now imagine you have this on a much larger scale with ever with grocery stores that have all the food or restaurants um, or, or anything really that people are going and buying. And the government guys, gas, <laughs> not guys, you, no, no price control. Don't on be guys. buying those. Yeah, no. don't be buying those. Not in America. Uh, <laughs> you go to Amsterdam or something for that. Um, no, but you when it gets on a larger scale and you have the government that is setting the price totally of all these things and setting them lower. It's the same with rent control in, in, in Los Angeles. Rent control is a disaster in Los Angeles. But you do it all over, and then there's not enough goods to go around because a corporation is not going to, to hurt their bottom line to, to go with these, these new edicts that you're putting forth when it comes to your, your price mandating. They're just going to make less product, and then people aren't going to have as much product. Right? That is communism for you. OK, when the government this is people come in and I, all the time I'm seeing in the like the comments, I can't read them now because I'm doing the show, but I'll go in sometimes later, not on every show, but some shows when we talk about some of the communist or socialist stuff and and capitalist stuff. And people in the comments are just like, no one understands capitalism. You guys don't get it. All this kind of stuff. All capitalism is at its barest form. OK, just re read Adam Smith. All it is is I have this cup of hot chocolate. Taylor has five dollars. Taylor says, I want your hot chocolate. And I want your five dollars, and we trade. That's literally all capitalism is in its barest form. There, th that's all there is to it. Okay, what is socialism? I mean, now you get into this whole convoluted mess where you have the government coming in, seizing the means of production. They say it's giving it back to the workers, but in reality, it's the government that's setting the prices on things. The government controls how businesses run. Okay, it's not it's not you, worker, getting control of your own government. It is the government having total dominion over you because they are now controlling the sectors that used to be controlled by private CEOs or whoever that are now being controlled by the government. I mean, this is in some ways, you know, closer to how America runs today with how terrible the cronyism is. Right. But that's a separate point. But on, on, in terms of just what capitalism is and what socialism is, that is it. Capitalism is so simple. And when you start getting all these different things in there and screwing around with it and adding these socialist principles, then you get. CNN asking, should the government control the price of food and gas? Amen. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> People Guys, Taylor are loving your rants on, uh, on capitalism and, and communism, so it's great. That's good. I yeah. did a video. I went, to, I went to Cal State LA, and I went and I asked them. I said, what is socialism? You know, And all of them just come and say, that's like equality, right? That's what people think it is. You go and talk to these young communists. You know, not, not all of them are so brainwashed. I mean, they are brainwashed if they're a communist. But you go and I, I listen. Also, communists need to be as hated as Nazis. Okay, that's a big a big point of mine that I've been working on in 2022. I'm working on 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 hating communism as much as Nazism. Okay, because communism killed way more people than the Nazis did. And we have a Prager U five minute video about that. Yeah, why we do. is communism hated as much as right. Nazism? Right, and communism has like this this. It's propped up. 
You know, it's propped up as not nearly as bad. Like communism, when people think about communism, I hear people on the right talk about it. They think of it as like, oh, this is another economic system that is comparable to capitalism. Like you are control, like you are opposing the two. This is why I said socialism before that you are comparing socialism to capitalism because those are more economic. But socialism leads to, to communism, as Vladimir Lenin so eloquently put it. But communism is a system that kills people. It literally murders people. Okay, that is what communism does. You know, to say that we are just like compare, like in, in in our talks on on communism or on social media, when I hear people talk about it, they say like it's just another system of of the economy. Like it's another way to run the economy. It's not just another way to run the economy. It's a way to destroy a nation. It's a way to kill people. It's a way to control people's lives so that you have the ability to make them do whatever you like. That is what communism is. It should be just as hated as Nazism. There's no reason. I mean, if not even more in some ways with the amount of people that it's killed and the influence that it has had on people, the Marxism that is going on throughout our, our world. I mean, starting in the Frankfurt School and Marcuse, getting into Saul Linsky's Rule for Radicals, how those books and all, all of that has influenced people at the college level, uh, and to then go into other works and work in government and in corporations and HR departments. Communism and, and Marxism and postmodernism have infiltrated the masses. I mean, it, it is the most damaging system. But the, the left-wing media will come and tell you, you know, you know oh, white, white supremacist Nazis, that's the biggest threat. It's like, do you really know? Any of you guys who are watching this right now know any Nazis or know anyone who prescribes to Nazism? Maybe some of you like know some weird fringe guy in the backwoods of your town who does it. But for the most part, you can just walk in here in Los Angeles. You can walk five minutes down down Hollywood Boulevard and find 10 people who say, oh, yeah, I'm a communist. You know, it's all over the place and it's heralded as like a good thing. Whereas people like the, they'll come and say, oh, there's all these Nazis, there's white supremacist Nazis. They do that so that you don't worry about other people being communists when they're communists all over this country, okay? It's like the Red Scare all over again, to be honest. I mean, they're, they're literally communists all over, and no one is coming out and saying communist. these people are just as bad as Nazis. If the ideas that the communists believe in are put forth in America to their totality, you will have totality of death and destruction in America because that is what communism does. All it knows how to do is destroy. All the left knows how to do is destroy. Saying that you want to control the price of food and gas on CNN is only a destructive principle because it destroys people's incentives to make good products or to make right. products that actually work for people because then it's controlled by someone else who is not the business owner. Okay? Capitalism in the way that it is in America right now. It has its flaws. We have a lot of problems in America right now. All we do on this show, I mean, I'm a political commentator. I talk about problems in America every single day, all day. Okay? I'm not saying this is all perfect and hunky-dory of what we have. Obviously not. But to say that that we just need to try a different system like communism, to even have this be suggested on on CNN, it's just it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. It is. What do you think has changed? Because even as recently as the mid late '80s, I mean, even like movies um, in pop culture everywhere you see, communism was hated uh, in America and in the West. It was, it, it, was it was considered to be this massive threat, and that was back when we had like a a world where there was two preeminent powers, or supposedly the USSR right. and the USA, and they were in that deadlock competition, and there there was always the shadow of that threat um, that we lived under, and and people had a a, a healthy fear uh, or disdain for communism, and I feel like in the last thirty years, um, that's been lost. So yeah. what do you think has happened in the last 30 years that's made us friendly? Well, I think the destruction of the USSR, first of all, was a huge blow to communism, first of all. And so after that, then we as America didn't really have a large communist enemy like we did after the collapse of the Soviet Union, right? And so then you have China in the 90s start to build its economy back up and become this world superpower. But the left looking at China, I mean, you guys know, and NBCCP, the mainstream media, the, all of these types of people, they love China. And people who don't like China, who are in these places, say China is a capitalist country, right? Now, cap China does have capitalist uh, capitalist systems mixed in with their, their communism and all this weird stuff that they have. It's a very convoluted mess with what they have going on. Um, so it's not just like purely communism. But, but parts of it that are communism are evil. It's terrible what they're doing to people, but they get so much money, the, the left wing media and politicians and the swamp and all of this kind of stuff get so much money from China that they're not going to call it out as communism yeah. bad. Right. And the same hippies from the 60s and 70s, the anti-war hippies, the cultural revolution hippies, the people who who loved communism back then, back in the 1960s, when people are going to Berkeley and standing on cars and standing up for free speech, I mean, and stock talking about, oh, it's, uh, you know, 
they, they, they want to have abortions. These people were kids, okay? No one takes kids seriously. Yeah, they made some changes, and the Cultural Revolution changed America forever. But these people weren't in direct positions of leadership or power. They were they were student protests. You know, they were they were younger people coming and protesting the war or or the culture or the conservative parents, whatever it was, right? But now you have these people who have made it into power, who are now in every single aspect of our lives, right? So if the people who were communists back in the sixties and seventies, excuse me, are now in positions of power today and they get to control the narrative, they're not going to continue to push this anti-communist narrative. They're going to push forward that capitalism is the evil and that communism is actually a good thing. And even if they don't flat out say communism is a good thing, they at least don't say communism is a bad thing. You don't find anyone saying communism is a bad thing anymore, right? It's taboo to say communism is a bad thing. And that's a sad fact because the people who are in charge now don't look at history. They don't care about the human lives lost. And they just say, this time, we're going to do it right. Last time, we did it wrong. Real communism's never been tried. I promise. It's never been tried. Just give me one chance and gulag, we make it happen. It's good system. I promise. I think that's a very interesting point of activists who were students in the 60s, 70s are now in position of power to this. So they were getting indoctrinated with the postmodernism coming out of Frankfurt School and all of the uh, the Mar neo-Marxism and stuff. Um, and now they they never had to put their ideas to the test, but now they're in power and they're being put to tests and we're seeing all these bad results of massive inflation and, 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 and the rest. Um, and then I think the China point is another very important piece of why we we, I think there's there's an element of like the the greed of we we wanted cheap manufacturing and we outsourced everything out there and so we were willing to turn a blind eye to what we knew was um, evil. We knew they've been propping up all these regimes in in the Asia. Um, and allowing all these atrocities to happen, but we were more, we didn't want to hold China accountable back when they weren't as powerful and weren't as strong. And meanwhile, we were feeding them, sending all our manufacturing overseas and allowing them to profit off of that and strengthening their position economically and militarily and, and just allowing them to grow and grow and grow. It reminds me of uh, Jordan Peterson tells the story of like uh, a, a baby dragon that mm -hmm. is like in the house and the longer you ignore it, it's like at first it's this cute little thing that everyone's like, oh, the cute dragon. And then it just grows and grows and grows and then it eventually consumes the whole house and neighborhood and kills everyone and i feel like we're the the china was like this baby dragon that we're like oh yeah we can get our goods manufactured much more cheaply and if we outsource labor there uh oh what they're committing communism i mean they're committing all these atrocities and human human rights uh, violations well i mean you know we're going to profit off this and i think we were willing to turn a blind eye to that for too long and uh now we've got a much bigger dragon to deal with and meantime uh morally we've kind of fallen into a stupor as a nation we've got off of the, the we've gotten fat off of the wealth that the we we got through outsourcing everything to china and now we're like asleep and we're numb and we're like hardened to all of the evils that they're committing in hong kong and against the uyghurs and propping up north korea and we're just kind of like you know well whatever i mean the, this is just kind of how the world is now and we don't have any like moral strength or courage to like be like no that's not okay we're not going to stand for this and communist and call a spade a spade say communism's evil and, and make that our adversary and the and our pop culture today has been complicit in it now too because Hollywood all these people share those postmodern ideas and the Marxist ideas and they're like have this utopian ideal that they're trying to push and it's all just there it, it's just a big giant mess and the net result is the average American citizen doesn't understand the value of freedom doesn't understand liberty doesn't understand wh why that's important or why capitalism is a system that's that uh, is compatible with freedom and why communism is not and uh, meantime they're friendly to these ideas of utopia and and the leftism and that, that seems like that's a huge mess that we've allowed to happen and over the last what 30 to 60 years right now Lawrence Reed is, is the, the the president of fee Foundation for Economic Education. Great guy. Um, actually, when I went to CU Boulder, I, he was the first speaker I ever brought out, and these leftists came and just absolutely tried to annihilate him. It was it was awesome. Um, awesome that he was able to defend himself. But he has a great piece about how socialism actually killed ancient Rome. Look up what 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 the the government of Rome did to the farms, did to the plumbings, and all that stuff in Rome. How it actually helped bring that nation to a fall. Right. Look that up. But you know, you brought up brought up a good point. God is gone in the West. Nietzsche said God is dead. We have killed him. Okay? It's not completely dead. Of course not. But it is getting to a place where it is declining. And so Taylor talking about people looking for utopia, 
is essentially people looking for utopia on Earth because they don't believe that there is a utopia afterwards. They think mm -hmm. my body just withers into the ground and then that's that's the end of my entire existence, right? But if you know that there is something afterwards, something that you are striving for, that you are living in this life to protect that, then you are not going to be so scared of death and you don't need a utopia on Earth. You right. understand what your purpose is here on Earth. But when you don't have that, when you don't have that backbone and they destroy that moral framework for how you're supposed to have a society. I mean, America has been a religious nation. It was a religious nation. And, and is no longer that. They want it to be a secular nation. They laugh at you if you believe in God or, you know, believe in Jesus Christ, any of this kind of stuff. And when you take all that away, you have these people who crave utopia because they have no other great meaning in their lives. They feel like they need that. They need the, the world that they, be, that they live in to be perfect. But look at human nature. You cannot have a perfect yeah. world. You cannot have a perfect world. It is impossible because every single time you're going to have some person like me with a big mouth who comes and ruins all the, the plans that you had. Right. You know, or something like that, whatever it is, something is going to continually always ruin the perfect world that you think that you have, no matter what. I remember there was this piece I read. Maybe some of you guys, you might know this. Um, it was years ago. It was like they had a utopia. It was this whole utopian paradise. Everyone was happy. Everything was great. But be, the only way to make this utopia work is if they took one guy and they locked him away in a cage and abused him and tortured him. And the only way for the utopia to work is that every year they would have to take a new Dang. person to be like this tortured person. It was it was all fake and made up, obviously. Mm. It was like, it Sounds was like, like Black a, Mirror. Yeah, it was like a thought experiment, experiment book I read back in college or something like that. I don't know. Um, I didn't read many of the books my professors told me in college. <laughs> <laughs> so Who's got time but, for all that? Yeah, who's got time for all that, you know? Um, but that's a great point yeah. that if you couple together the the notion that utopia is not some, is not something that we have to wait for the afterlife for, but it is something we can achieve here on earth and with the belief that human nature is fundamentally good, then you that is a recipe for a lot of atrocities because you're holding out in front of you this, well, the only barrier to my utopia is these bad people. And if I could just dominate and remove them from the way, then everything would, would be great. Whereas a a more traditional Judeo-Christian framework says, you, t you know, is skeptical of human nature, knows that, like uh, Solzhenitsyn said, the line between good and evil passes through every human heart. Um, you're skeptical and know that there's a, uh, there's a shadow side of me, there's the, the evil side of me, and I have to be know that I'm I'm if given the right set of circumstances, I could be the Nazi prison guard. And having that healthy self skepticism, um, it, it it helps you make a better society because you have to assume that everyone is going to act in their own self interest, and you make laws and you build economic systems such as capitalism that uh, properly understand the ways that human nature, and then it actually works and produces outcomes. Communism never works because it's based on a on a fundamental. Uh, a misread of what human nature is and a fundamentally wrong idea of this utopian vision that it can be achieved here on earth. Right. And people have to actually do something to make communism happen. Someone with their own set of values and ideas and power struggles and all this has to make communism happen. But if you took two people who were unrelated, never met each other, and you put them on two sides of an island and then a year later they met and they had to figure out how to work together, it would be capitalism. They say, I'm going to trade you my coconuts for my, for my bananas. That's how it worked. You know, that, that's how it would work. They wouldn't say, oh, we need a third party to come in so that we can give the bananas right. to them so then we can divvy them all up. Right? It's a voluntary transaction. Right. It's a voluntary transaction. That's mutually transaction. beneficial. Exactly. Co capitalism is the natural order of the world. Communism is something that has to be created by other people who are selfish, who want to kill people. It has to be coerced because it misunderstands human nature. It misunderstands the way people will voluntarily act. And so because of that, you're not going to get the results of the utopia that you want apart from coercion. And that's why communism is inconsistent with freedom, because you have to coerce in order to get the utopian results that it wants. Right. All right. Let's go to let's go to some TikToks that we had today. The first is a great transition, Will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amal is way better at the transition. She is. I just but, say, let's move on. It's TikTok Tuesday. We're going to do some TikToks to react to them. Here we go. All right. This one is from Australia. Okay. And this, is, this isn't this is just like some kids making this. All right. This is from... Um, the government made the it, The government right? made it. The government of Australia. I think like it's their health Victoria, department or something? Yeah, yeah. Victoria, something like that. They made this. And I just... Every time they have some sort of SJW phrase or, or you know, like 
take symbolism, a take a shot. All right. <laughs> and you're going to be blacked out by the end of this, this one minute. Okay. You're going to one minute blackout. New record. It's challenge accepted. <laughs> is it Tuesday? <laughs> it's five, five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Actually, it is. it's five o'clock in uh, central time zone right now. So Yeah. All right. All, all Our East guys. Coast friends. <laughs> break, out the, break out the gym beam. It's going to be a good one. All right. Here we there go. Okay. So now lockdown's over, should we go out and do something? Wait. I mean. Pause. Okay. Sorry. She, the other girl, pulled up her lesbian friend's mask. She pulled up her mask, which, if you know anything about how masks work, that basically makes the mask invalid, okay? Because you have just put your germy hands all over this other person's mask. Which it's, is it's, basically a cloth mask right there, too, anyway. Which, right, it's like yeah. not even real. She might yeah. as well just put her beanie over her face. <laughs> okay, wait, now I gotta... gotta... Alright, so they said, hey, so now lockdown's over. That's Here your first go. shot, by the way. That's your first shot, Okay. Lesbians pulling up each other's masks. That's a shot. <laughs> and the fact the fact that they're lesbian and the fact that they pull up the mask, that's two shots. That's right two there. shots. All right, we're already <laughs> we're having a good one already. Go out and do something on the weekend. I mean, the new Spider Man movie's coming out. Well, that is true. Because that I am not Great idea. <laughs> hey, two things to see Spider Man, please. Sure thing. Can I just see a vaccination certificate? Ugh, these Australians are so hard to understand. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. Sure thing, Mike. Can I see your spider man? Yeah, spider man. We get some kookaburra cheese fries. With kookaburra, that. Uh, and onion. Yeah, my yeah, no, nah, nah, yeah, right. Um, okay, so now they're at the movie theater. They're going to see Spider Man at 10 a.m. on a Saturday, mind you. And they got to check their Vex cards. Yeah, they got to check this this guy with the Fabio hair. <laughs> He's gonna come in and check their little Vex piece. Who gets first, please? That's another shot. Here you go. My parents haven't let me get vaccinated yet. I mean, you're over 14. You don't actually need to get their permission. That is, is that not the creepiest thing <laughs> you've ever heard in your life? That the government, the government, this is a government made TikTok, okay? They're trying to be cool and, and, and Gen Z-ish. You know, the government comes in and says, you don't need your parents' permission. You're over 14. How creepy is that? What a weirdo. And what, what is this lady's age? What You're not a like? Joey anymore. Yeah. You full-blown kangaroo, mate. Looking good. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, get your jib. Um, yeah, how old is this lady? Is this her girlfriend? I don't know. Groomer, maybe? I don't Groomer. know. I don't know. I don't know. In those overalls. I mean, jeez. Terrible. All right, let's keep going. I don't. Want to go do it now? Go on a back state? That sounds fun. Nothing turns off a woman more than asking her if she wants to go on a vax date. That's for the fellows out there. I'll, I'll give you that tip for free. Unless you're in Australia. Apparently. Unless you're in Australia, apparently. Man, I, I've lost so much respect for Australia, which is so sad. Let's go. Oh, we got a Muslim. Mus oh, good catch. Yeah. She's, she's subtle. They're sliding it in there. Mm -hmm, we got a. So now the Muslim woman is administering the vaccine um okay they found their nearest clinic and they're about to get job hi darling ready for your vaccine today yeah can i just see your arm thank you so much oh all the time see that wasn't too bad was it no thank you oh my my heart my, <laughs> <laughs> my, my blood's clotting all right <laughs> Uh, <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. It's almost done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Live, love, jab for more cute dates in your life. All right, let's go on a VX date. VX date. Look, the rainbow flag. At the mm. Vax clinic. Now, is she fully vaccinated? Can she get into the theater now? Or does she have to wait two weeks, get another jab? And how, Are we up to four jabs now? So you have to wait two more weeks, then two more weeks? Yeah, I think they might go up to five. So she wants to see Spider-Man. I mean, Spider-Man's going to be out of the theater by the time she's uh -huh. ready. <laughs> she's I know. She has vaxxed. to wait two more weeks to get her next one. Unless she got J&J. &J, <clears throat> got the one-time jab. The one and done. Yeah, or AstraZeneca. But for, I'm guessing she got Moderna or Pfizer. 
And mm-hmm. now she's not going to be even be able to see Spider Man. And the fact Pick that this, your poison. Yeah. And the fact that this other lady is hanging around her being unvaccinated seems weird, doesn't it? I, I'm surprised they didn't just deport her when she said she's on this. <laughs> like, give her the send her back to Serbia. Novak Djokovic treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't know how drunk you guys got off, off of all that, the. I the lost count of the shots like halfway through that. It was just it yeah. was too much virtue signaling and propaganda. Madness. Yeah, no, it, we usually lose count. That is truly a disturbing one, man. <clears throat> well, it's disturbing because I think because of the age thing. That was the most disturbing part to me. Yeah, because the other one was older, right? Than the yeah, 14 she year was old. older. And then she's like, you don't need your parents' permission. You can just go and. Is it legal vaccinated. for like uh, to date a minor for lesbians in <laughs> Australia? Only if they're lesbians. Oh, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I have no idea. Australians, can you chime in? If you, uh, if you know any better, I'd like to know. Chime in. Say it a strike. Yeah, right. CNN would like to know. Mm. All right. Here's uh, from Joe Rogan. Um, this one has gone viral everyone if you probably have already seen this by yeah, now but it's, wait, wait. it's been all over the internet yeah you've been under a rock if you haven't seen this yeah. yet but we're going to watch it anyway or hashtags say like uh you should explain that for the listeners oh yeah i guess okay all right so it's a guy he hits his shoulder on the wall for different generations and when he finally gets to born in 2000 he falls on the floor and he takes a selfie and starts crying uh hashtag wall hater hashtag why is it there hashtag victims of a wall and you hashtag homes with no walls hashtag do something wall supremacy wall supremacy (laughs) You see that picture that Matt Walsh posted today? It was Matt that Walsh. Matt Wall. Oh, Matt W. Bad word. Shh. It was that picture of that woman who drove her car into a frozen lake, and then she's standing on top of her car and she's taking a selfie. And someone took a picture of her taking a selfie on top. Oh, of Oh, I her did see car. that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that is the absolute state of our generation. It is. It is that you would you're drowning. Or potentially going to drown in a frozen lake. You just dropped your car in the river and you're taking a selfie of it for everyone to see. I mean, it is kind of a legendary picture, going to be honest. If I, if I, if my car f- flew in the river, I'd probably be taking a selfie too. Did it for the gram. Yeah, do it for the gram, That's honestly, right. for that 15 minutes of fame, baby. <laughs> but this is, this is pretty accurate. I think <clears throat> people born in 2000 are pretty weak. It rings true. Everyone knows that young people these days are snowflakes. All right. <laughs> Let's, let's, Taylor and I are going to sound like the most boomer curmudgeons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back in my day, back in 1996, things were a lot different. <laughs> you don't hey, get it. Look, millennials are like the last generation to no, remember life pre like cell phones and internet everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's crazy to think. Yeah. I don't, they had Instagram when I got to sophomore year of high school, I think. Mm. So you were in college, huh? Yeah. I was, uh, yeah, I was in college age. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I remember my babysitter when I was a kid. She had like just like a, a horrible like Nokia, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I had one of those. Kids had. Um, yeah, when I was in like middle school, we I M'd on AIM, and uh, mm-hmm. I had a dial-up connection. That was like fifth, sixth grade. Yeah, it was it was a different time, man. Mm-hmm. Had to wait for the AOL to connect, and I'm aging, I'm dating myself here, but. <laughs> Kids Hot. these days will never know. Hot Taylor sixty nine was his username. Yeah. Actually, I had I had a bunch. I had one, my first one was Big Beans Seventeen. Is that what does that mean? I don't know. It's funny to my middle schooler brain, though. <laughs> <laughs> I I never had a name account. I never had a name. All right, let's look, look at this video. This one's from Libs of TikTok, and f- well, not from Libs of TikTok, but on their account that they found us someone. Things inside my COVID classroom says this this guy with a face shield on and a face mask. <laughs> Book quarantine. Germ killing station. And also, wait, look. He can't even spell quarantine right. Quarantine. This is guy guy is supposed to be a teacher. And he can't even spell the word right. Keep going. Also, this little hand thing is... uh, Offensive to Italians. No heat. 
He's child abuse. Yeah, so he keeps his windows open when it's 10 degrees outside and doesn't put the heat on. <laughs> Why would you not put the heat on? Does I don't that, like, know. ventilate the air? Yeah, what a, a stupid thing. Why would you not go and put the heat on if they were leaving the... Does the, does the heat... I think it's because the heat is supposed to spread COVID or something. Also, isn't it like well established even by CDC, WHO, that the virus does not spread via surface transfer? So the whole idea of like quarantining books that have been touched by other people or having a hand sanitizer, like it's generally san sanitizing, but this is for COVID. Right. And this is also for kids who should be getting germs on them. Yeah. Kids should get Omicron. Dwight Schrute. hundred percent. Sneeze on me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Build your These pieces. kids should be getting it. I mean, that's why <clears throat> when kids have dogs, there's, there's a study done on this, that when kids have dogs, they're actually healthier and they get less sick because the dog brings, the dog goes outside, it poops on the ground, it eats its poop, and then it goes and licks the kid's face, right? That's how <laughs> dogs are. That's what dogs do. And so that literally kids who have dogs, families that have dogs and they have kids, they, the kids get less sick. Yeah, there's because like the, the immune system is boosted when you have a dirty animal in your house. So when you have these books that are just getting sanitized, everything in your classroom is getting sanitized. You're missing out on important things that should be, it should be dirty for you as a kid. Yeah, there's a whole thing about with with peanut allergies. Like, their doctors will recommend that you expose your child to peanuts as an infant um, in like very small doses or whatever, like powder in the milk or something. It's in John Heights' book, uh, Righteous Mind. They talk about it as like an anti-fragile type of thing because if you don't get that exposure, then you end up with the allergies and, and ditto for the immune system. Right. All right, we got one more, guys. We got one more. I need to refresh the page, though. Now we have one more after this. Do we? The China one. Oh, yes. Hey, yo, what are you guys doing? This isn't what LA is all about. This is Los Angeles, man. We should be having each other's backs, looking out for one another, protecting our fellow citizens. They were fighting at the beginning of this, by the way. Now, let me see your Vax card. <laughs> I got a picture on my phone. Oh, I've got that. Uh, <laughs> Good. Thanks, man. Now let's mask up. Mouth and nose. Let's double mask up in case anyone's watching. Yeah, make sure they're two different colors so that everybody around you knows that you're wearing two masks. Let's stay safe out here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That was good, right? That was funny. Yeah, Taylor brought that one out. That was funny. Thank you. Well, who posted? I think um, Ali Stuckey or someone shared it, but it's Brent Pella is the comedian who made it. Yeah, take it off so it's not on the screen. Right? It's not on the screen. Okay. I got, I got you. I have to pull up this. I got you. You can thing. trust me. Thank you. I I'm know. I know. This. No. Well, this isn't even my computer. This is your computer. That's Amala's computer. Or no, it's Amala's computer. Oh. You can, well, yeah, I think the, the audience could see like, we were logged into Amala's um, Twitter. Yeah, her Instagram. Oh, okay. So if you want to read some of her DMs. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Live on air. All right, guys. We're Welcome to Will and Amala Live. Today we're reading Amala's DMs, where she says horrible things about all of us. Okay. Um, wait, which is the one? Oh, okay, found it. One sec. All right. We're pulling up the last TikTok of the day for TikTok Tuesday. Okay. You ready? Boy, all right. Let me refresh it. All right. All right. Here you got go. it? Yep. I'll give you that too. Oh, wait, stupid Instagram. How do I How do I redo it? What do you mean? Boy, yo, Jin, yo, die. What's your guan win? Well, Yo Yu and Bufan Chi, let The Rock tell you in Chinese. Uh oh. Chinese? Ding bang ding dong, his don't go aye. You want the Chinese version? Wait, play it again so that people okay, can wait, see wait, it from so the play beginning. It again. It's hilarious. That too. Well, Yo Jin Yo die. What's your Guan Jun? Well, Yo Yu and Bufan Chi, let The Rock tell you in Chinese. Uh oh. Chinese? Ding bang ding dong, his don't go aye. <laughs> that's pretty good that's uh, good it's funny kids these days will never understand now now john cena for wwe in case you missed the joke back in the day whenever the rock was saying something and chinese just made up a bunch of gibberish and impersonated whatever he thinks chinese sounds like and that's like it's kind of funny it's like you know back of in the day that was funny. okay and then today john cena is actually like a shill for China and just speaks Chinese. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you missed, we'd cover this on the show a few months ago, but he came out with this groveling like apology over something with a movie he was involved in, I think Fast and Furious, but he like right. spoke in perfect Chinese, this like groveling apology saying how bad he was for insulting the Chinese people. Oh, it was like by acknowledging Hong Kong. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, that was when we were back in the old studio. 
No, that's hilarious, though. And it's not like The Rock hates Chinese people. Of course The Rock doesn't hate Chinese people. You have to be able to joke about other people's races. That's how people get along. When you are from different races, then, like, like Amala makes white jokes to me. I'll make black jokes to her. Like, that's how you do it. You know, that shows that you guys love each other, that you actually care about each other. Now, if you're too scared to talk about race with someone else, you're never friends that way. You make jokes about the other person, however it is, because you love that person. Right. That's what it's about. If you don't make jokes about people, then, you know, you're just silencing the things that are actually going on inside your mind. And, you know, it's true. Totally. All right, guys. That's where we're going to end By the, the way, show real today. quick. Kowtowing oh. to China is uh, it's, but kowtowing to the CCP like uh, like John Cena did is more hateful than the rocks joking I oh would much say. more hateful. because you're you're pretending like the regime that's oppressing them and committing genocide against the Uyghurs and committing human rights atrocities and taking away the the basic human rights of everyone in their country patting them on the back is fine but and making a joke about how Chinese people sound to you is is this evil thing that's mm -hmm. the society we live in today right no be be like the rock don't be like John Cena <laughs> like okay the rock be like the rock <laughs> thanks for watching guys today if you guys like this show make sure you can go on Spotify Google Play Apple Podcasts. you can rate it five stars you can download it watch it on double speed like I do so you can make sure that you never miss a new episode so you can watch them fast make sure you're following me on social media Amala Taylor and Prager you that you are liking this video you are commenting you're sharing it with all your friends on YouTube or here on Facebook wherever it is that you are and guys that's about all we got today we appreciate you all the downloads of the podcast all the listeners you know the, the hundreds of thousands of you I mean, it's incredible the numbers that we've been able to do with this show. And it's all because of you guys and standing up strong for what you believe in. I, I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful for all of you. So thank you for all that. And we are going to see you tomorrow. Amala will be back. And it's going to be a great day. See you guys.